Hey everybody, welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric, thank you so much for joining me. If you are new to the channel, welcome. It is very nice to meet you. And if you're returning, what's up squad? So, welcome to your readings for September 2018, yeah? Um, thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you to all the new subscribers, but thank you to all the returning subscribers. Uh, your support is everything to me. I really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we just recently hit 10,000, and I'm super, super happy. I couldn't be more grateful. Thank you to all you guys. You are freaking amazeballs, yeah? <laughs> so, uh, just a few things. One, this is a general reading, so please take what resonates with you and leave what doesn't. Um, and the energies are interchangeable, okay? So it could be you that we're talking about. It could be the other person that we're talking about, if we're talking about another person. Um, these aren't necessarily love readings, but love definitely comes out because I am channeling for the Venus sign. Your Venus sign is uh, how you approach love, how your information about that. So if you are looking for information about like, your love life, I would recommend, me personally, I recommend that you always start with your Venus sign. You can find that out um, if you pull you know uh, pull up your birth chart yeah drop your birth chart now about birth charts um, I want to make a little bit of a uh, bit of a suggestion um, this might be a bit of a long intro if people want to leave a timestamp go right ahead um, but I do recommend that you guys listen to the intro at least once especially if you're watching like a bunch of different signs um, just listen to the intro at least once and then like do whatever um, but uh, I recently got into Vedic Astrology, which is uh, also known as Sidereal, I believe. Um, and uh, I did this because my spiritual team, my spiritual guides really pushed it for me to start investigating. And I did so. And I learned that my signs are different. Okay, So I always thought of, uh, I grew up as a Taurus. My sun sign was Taurus. But then when I did the Eastern chart, the Vedic chart, um, sidereal chart, I learned that my son is actually in Aries. And when, <laughs> when I learned about that and, and I really like investigated and I read it and I like felt it out, it, it immediately clicked. Like it felt right. I was like, Oh, Oh man. Because when I started to look back on like how I present myself, how I like how I work in the world and everything like that, um, I am very much an Aries. <laughs> So that makes sense. I still kind of resonate with Taurus, but um, very much in Aries. So then other than that, you know, in, in the Western chart, um, my moon sign was Leo and my rising sign is Venus. I'm sorry, rising sign is Venus. No, my rising sign is Virgo and my Venus is in Aries. But then in the Eastern chart, my moon sign is Cancer, my rising sign is Leo, and then my Venus is in Pisces. And when I looked at all that uh, that stuff too, I was like, oh my God, that makes so much more sense. Because when it came to the Western chart, I was like, how am I so intuitive, but I don't have, I barely have any water in my chart. I think in the Western chart, I think I have like one planet in Scorpio. Um, and it might, I think it might be Neptune or something. I don't know. But then when it came to the Eastern chart, there was all the water I was missing, right? So for me personally, things really clicked and I understood, I came to a better understanding of myself. So the reason why I'm sharing this with you guys is I encourage you to check that out. Um, you can watch my videos or any of the videos, whether you, whether you resonate more with Western or Eastern astrology, it really doesn't matter. It's just um, all about how you feel how this connects with you, how it resonates with you, okay? Um, so I'm, I put uh, some links to some websites to, that are, I find are to be really, really great um, in giving you your chart. Um, actually, there's one, there's one that actually will give you both, but I'll give you two, two different options. Um, they're going to be in this description box below, and uh, I encourage you guys to, you know, insert your um, your birth data, your birth information, and check it out. See what comes out, and if you resonate with something, go for it, and then start to watch the videos from that point of view. Like if now, if you all of a sudden you find that things are different when it comes to the Eastern chart, and you want, and you kind of resonate with it already, and you want to watch videos uh, in line with that, I encourage you to do so. You know, it's really all about what you resonate with, how, what you feel about the situation. Yeah. Okay. With that said, um, I'll, a few more things. One, you can find me in New York City at Om Shanti Bookshop. 
every Monday from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Om Shanti is located on 14th Street between 2nd and 3rd Avenue in the East Village of Manhattan. So come check me out if you're in the area. I would love to meet you guys in person. Um, the, uh, the link to the website uh, for Om Shanti Bookshop is in the description box below. So you can go to the website, get their phone number, give them a call. If you want to schedule a reading beforehand, you're more than welcome to do so. Or at the same time, walk-ins are definitely welcome. Um, and it's a great shop, you know, they've got all kinds of really nice stuff. The crystal selection is fantastic. So if you're into crystals, I recommend coming down and checking us out. We have a lot of great stuff there. Um, you can get some crystals wrapped and put into jewelry for you at the shop. Um, if you do want some crystal wrapping, ask for Martha. She's great at that. Um, what else? Oh, I am available for private readings. Uh, my email address is in the description box below, along with a description of all the readings that I offer, all in the description box. If you would like a personal reading with me, just go down into the description box, look at the options, read through them, see which one might, may work well for you, and then throw shoot me an email. If you don't know which reading would be best for you, go ahead and email me, and we'll chat, and I'll help you decide which one you would like, yeah? Okay, so for the readings this month, um, I'm using the Golden Universal Tarot. I love this deck, guys. I love it. It's just so pretty. And then I am closing out the readings with Oracle Guidance from my favorite, Oracle of the Unicorns. Yeah, I love unicorns. I personally believe that I am a unicorn, but you know what? That's fine. Whatever. <laughs> All right, guys. I guess that's it. Thank you for sticking in to with the with the long intro with me. If you did, if you didn't, don't worry about it. It's fine. You can't even hear this part of the message anyway. <laughs> I love you guys. Yeah. Thank you for tuning in. Let's get to it. Hey Virgo, happy birthday. <laughs> happy birthday, guys. I really hope you're having a great birthday. Uh, season and you're having a ton of fun and you're receiving all the love in the world. I love you guys. I really, 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 really do. Um, I've always, I've always had a really nice connection with Virgo. Um, in the Western chart, my rising sign is Virgo and my sun sign is Taurus. Um, so I really understand Virgo energy. Not only from an Earth point of view, you know, as a Taurus, um, a Taurus Sun, but then as a Virgo rising, I do often resonate really well with the perfectionism aspect of things. I'm not too organized all the time, but I do like to put things in order, you know, when I feel um, inspired to. We'll say, yeah. So I'm gonna stop rambling. <laughs> Let's get into it. Um, I do want to say. I was connecting with the Virgo energy um, before, you know, I started recording and some serious emotions came up. Like I, I literally, I started crying. Now, there is a personal situation that I have uh, surrounding certain Virgos, but I just feel like there's a lot of heavy energy for Virgo right now. So I don't know what's gonna come out in the reading. I'm gonna try my best to not cry anymore. We'll see, okay? I just wanted to throw that out there. Disclaimer, boop, we're done. All right, cool. Let's get, <laughs> let's get into it, guys. <sighs> Hi, Spirit. Please make me a clear channel for all Virgos. Sun, Moon, Rising, Venus. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. For this month, of September 2018. Thank you so much, Spirit. All right, Virgo. Give me just a moment here. Let's just shuffle this up for you. Virgo. Month of September 2018. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. Seeing light blue energy, playful, bright, expanding. Okay, so there really there might be some serious expansion type energies. Um, you may really be shifting, evolving, changing, growing. 
your mind may be expanding. I mean, we are in your season. I just feel like this is a perfect time for you to change your focus, to really put things into perspective for yourself and see things in a, you know, compartmentalize it, like organize it, put it in its place, but then see it differently. Like once you put it in, in, in place, then zoom out and look at the bigger picture instead of being so detail oriented, even though this is Virgo season and it's very much about the details and organization and reorganizing and everything. You, I just feel like you have this unique opportunity to once you get everything into place and everything into order to then step back and look at the bigger picture and see how all of those different particles, compartments, um, sections, everything that you you spent such time and, and energy organizing, zoom out and then see how they all fit together in a greater, in a bigger way, in like in the in the grander scheme of things. Yes. And that goes for everybody, not just Virgos. Like even if you're not a Virgo and you're cross watching here, you have the opportunity to tap into this energy. I know Pisces, Pisces is gonna, <laughs> Pisces is your exact opposite Virgo. So you're gonna have time or Pisces is gonna have, um, Pisces, you can really use this time to compartmentalize, to organize, but then use your expansive awareness to really zoom out. I guess that's where that's coming from for me because in the, in the, uh, you know, in Eastern astrology, I'm a Pisces Venus and I really resonate with that. Really, really resonate with that. So, and Pisces and Virgo are the exact opposites. It's, I'm sorry, I'm rambling again, but <laughs> okay. One more shuffle. Okay, I like one more and then last one and then I'm gonna cut the deck. Virgo, Virgo, Virgo. There you are. Okay. the deck and see what we've got for you Virgo okay oh hallelujah <laughs> overall energy we have the Sun I'm gonna cry again um everything's gonna be okay guys <laughs> the Sun is shining illumination so okay this is what I was talking about this is definitely the energy I was talking about when it comes to um, seeing the bigger picture, okay? So really use your energy, use your focus, your tenacity, your attention to detail to put things in correct order, right? But then zoom out and see how everything interacts with, all, with each other and see how everything is connected, okay? Once and I and um, I'm saying to put it in order first because just put it in order first and then that'll make it less overwhelming, right? Yeah. But the sun is shining, guys. Everything's gonna be okay. We wow. We've got the Queen of Swords. We've got the Five of Swords. And we've got the Five of Cups in reverse. Oh boy, it's so funny how everything, <laughs> it's so funny how, you know, everything can start out great and then boop, there you go, there's the conflict, all right? But this is past energy, this is what I'm hearing, okay? Um, and what the, the message of the sun is illumination. That was the first thing I heard when um, I saw the sun card, all right? Sorry, I'm drinking some coffee. So the sun and the queen of swords here, these two are working in tandem, okay? The sun is illuminating, <laughs> excuse my language, but like if you've been following, you know I curse. So if you don't like it, sorry about it, but I'm not gonna censor myself. Anyway, the sun in, 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 uh, in conjunction with, or in tandem with the energy of the queen of swords, is illuminating, illuminating the bullshit, okay? Is showing the truth behind the lies. Is illuminating the source 
of conflict with the Five of Swords here. I, I am picking up um, I, there could possibly, you could run into some conflict, okay? But the Queen of Swords energy, especially with it upright, the Queen of Swords is stopping it, is putting an end to it. Sees it, like literally sees it coming and is like, absolutely not, okay? With the Five of Cups in reverse, this is getting out of an energy of feeling regret and remorse. Doubt and fear also is what I'm hearing. I, I know this it, This sounds weird, but if it weren't for the sun here, I would be a little concerned, but I'm not because the sun is illuminating things, okay? It's showing the truth behind everything. It's showing the, it's, it, honestly, it's illuminating the, illuminating the source of this conflict that you may have been experiencing Virgo or cross-watcher involved with a Virgo, okay? And I'm picking up that it's also illuminating the internal imbalances that have created these external conflicts. And this Queen of Swords is putting an end to it. Because the Queen of Swords is not about the drama, is not about the bullshit. She will cut things out. <laughs> she will cut you out. She will ice, ice you out before you even have a chance to step to her with this shit. This Five of Swords shit starter energy. Just stir in the pot. Maybe for shits and giggles, or maybe because someone's been hurt. But either way, this is a self-defeating energy. And that is a big lesson right now. This is the illumination that's happening. This is understanding the self-defeating, combative, um, destructive energies, one-upping energies, shit-starting energies of the Five of Swords that's created regret, remorse, sorrow with the Five of Cups here. Illumination is the name of the game. I think that's what I'm going to call this reading. Illumination. Seeing the truth behind the lies and being able to come out of this Five of Cups energies. We have two fives so far. This is change. This is disruption. But I'm hearing organic change. This is not something that's forced. It's needed to happen. And it's happening naturally. All right. Let's get into the storyline here. I'm going to do first half of the month is on top. Second half of the month is on the bottom. Yes? Excellent. First half of the month, current energies. We've got the Ace of Wands. Inspiration. Creativity. You could be starting on a new creative project. You could be having inspiration towards moving in a new direction that's creative for you or passionate for you. Okay? This is good. And this is all coming out of this illumination. I'm really picking up an energy of wanting to go in a new direction, wanting to start over, wanting a second chance, deserving a second chance knowing that you deserve a second chance because you understand what has gone on in the past, okay? Ace of Wands is coupled with, excellent, the Nine of Swords in reverse, coming out of illusion, coming out of um, nightmares, of, of daymares, of fears, anxiety, sleepless nights, Finally breaking free from this energy that has been plaguing you for a long time, Virgo. Or a cross-watcher. This, this is a general reading, guys, so it goes either way, okay? Take what resonates, leave what doesn't. Whether you're the Virgo or you're a cross-watcher for the Virgo. Excuse me. This is, this is a beautiful way to start the month, I would say. Wanting to move forward in a in a different direction. For some of you, it's a different direction altogether. Others of you, it's in a similar direction, but a new approach. That's the big that's the big message here with the Ace of Wands. A new approach. Okay. Second set of current energies we have. Oh man, look at that. <laughs> I'm trying my hardest not to cry right now, guys. The Two of Cups upright. Okay. This is union with the self. This is balance with the self. 
This is accepting yourself and loving yourself. If you haven't gotten that there yet, you're on your way. You're well on your way. Okay? And what's facilitating this is this illusion, is not the illusion, the illumination. The illumination of the illusion. And the Queen of Swords energy that is finally putting an end, a kibosh, to this self-defeating energy. This could also, this Five of Swords is self-defeating in the sense that it could be self-hatred. Constantly fighting yourself instead of learning the truth about yourself and accepting it. So now, now with the Two of Cups, here we go. There's that self-acceptance. There's that self-love. Realizing that you are worthy of whatever it is you truly desire, regardless of what the external world has to say about it. It's your life, not theirs. Live it on your terms. Do what it is that makes you happy. What your fulfillment is. This is the balance between masculine and feminine energy within. Which in turn reflects that energy in your external. Okay? Two of cups is coupled with woo, death. Transformation. Change. Absolutely. What was I saying, guys? What was I saying? Accepting yourself for who you are and transforming through that. You could be dealing with a Scorpio. You could have Scorpio energy in your chart. Transformation. Transformation of the self. Transformation of a relationship. Starting over. Death, also, death could be, could symbolize marriage. I've been hearing that lately. So I just wanted to throw that out there. Especially, especially with the two of cups here. Someone either wants to propose, someone's thinking about proposals, somebody's thinking about marriage, maybe. Finally saying, hey, actually, maybe I do want to have one life partner. Why? Why would you be saying that, though? Because you are finally loving yourself. And understanding that the more promiscuous you are or the more partners you have, the more damage you do to yourself because you're just swapping energies with, a lot of the time, empty vessels. Or just people that are low in vibration, so that keeps you low in vibration and opens you up to all kinds of energetic disturbance. That's beautiful. All right. So current challenge for the first half of the month, we have Ten of Swords. Okay. So the current challenge is really putting an end to this stuff. Deceit. That's what I'm hearing. Is putting this stuff to rest now. Finally, because you, especially since you have the Nine of Swords in reverse here, okay, you're finally releasing yourself, moving forward. This is actually, even though, even though this is, say, I'm saying this is your current challenge, this is actually you moving forward from the nine to the 10. You're getting out of the anxiety. You're out of the anxiety. You've got the inspiration to go in a new or different direction, either a completely different or a new approach to a, a similar, same situation. And now the current challenge is finally putting the conflict, the destruction to an end. Ten of pen, I'm sorry, ten of swords is coupled with, okay, the three of wands in reverse. So this is your current challenge here. We've got the ten of swords and we've got the three of wands in reverse. This is for the first half of the month. I feel like the Three of Wands, especially in relation to the Ten of Swords, is the Three of Wands in reverse is talking about no longer waiting in some way. But what are you no longer waiting for? Maybe this is an end. I, I heard stalemate. I'm picking up an energy of, with the Three of Wands in reverse, I'm picking up an energy of um, constantly waiting for ships to come in that you never really you never really wanted to begin with. 
struggling over and over to manifest something that wasn't your truest desire. And coupled with the Ten of Swords, this makes me feel like whatever it was you were waiting on with the Three of Wands here was hurtful because it wasn't what you truly desired to begin with. I'm picking up an energy of it being something that was forced upon you, a belief that you felt you needed to hold. So, okay, yeah, that would be pretty challenging to finally let that go. No longer, no longer investing in things that don't really serve you. Because the Three of Wands talks about investments. The Three of Wands comes after the Two of Wands. In the Two of Wands, you make a decision or you're, in, you're making a decision towards something. When you get to the Three of Wands, you are now putting forth the effort to act upon what it is, you, the, what it is you've chosen and also um, being in the energy of, okay, I've put in the work. Now I'm waiting for my investment. Some of you may not even be willing to wait for that investment anymore. You're just done with the situation. I don't, I'm not waiting for this anymore. Okay. So for the first half of the month, potential outcome, we have the Queen of Wands. Divine feminine energy, charisma, magic, magnetic, passion, fun-loving, social, receptive. This could be you embodying this energy. This could be you connecting with this energy within or connecting with someone that embodies this energy. Queen of Wands is coupled with, oh boy, <laughs> the Ten of Cups. If you're a twin flame, this could be your Divine Feminine. It could be um, a soulmate. I'm getting an energy of recognition, seeing where your ultimate fulfillment truly lies, recognizing that whoever this Queen of Wands is, is like the ultimate fulfillment for you. This could be you, Virgo. You could be embodying this Queen of Wands energy, or it could be a cross watcher, the cross watcher, or someone that you're very fond of. Hmm. That's really beautiful. <laughs> so far, Virgo, it looks like it's going to be a really good month. Getting into the second half of your month, okay? Current energies for the second half of your month. First set, we have the star in reverse. Okay. Coming out of a healing phase, potentially lacking a bit of hope. I heard the first thing I heard with the star when it came out was deception and lies. So it could be you're going in the second half of the month, you maybe you hit a hiccup where things start to look different than what you had hoped. You may experience some things that are causing you to kind of lose hope and lose faith in the situation, maybe. You could also be coming out of a period of deep healing because the star it does talk about is about healing. And it's also about wish fulfillment. There is also, I'm picking up an energy of not necessarily needing to look anymore because you realize that your wish has been, you realize that your wish has been granted. So the star is coupled with Strength. Okay, strength. And strength is upright. So, yes, um, there's definitely an energy of losing faith. Lack of hope. But I'm hearing that this is transitory. 
and it's illusionary. And it's kind of a test, a test of wherewithal, a test of strength, inner knowledge, inner knowing. There could be an ego battle here too, okay? Because strength talks about the ego. And for the second half of the month, you could come into a situation where your ego is trying to throw doubt and shade into the situation. Or you could just be faced with some situations that cause you to kind of lose a little faith in it. But you're being asked, strength is asking you to persevere. Maintain your knowledge of what you know to be true for yourself. That kind of energy. Okay. Second set of energies for the second half of the month. We have, okay, six of swords in reverse. That is coupled with the hermit. There you are, Virgo. <laughs> okay. This is actually, this is, <laughs> wow. This is actually very, very good. It's powerful. It's strong. Okay. I'm getting an energy of perseverance here. With the six of swords in reverse, the first thing I heard was, not moving away or not running away. The Six of Swords in Reverse is telling me that there really is no need to run away. Things are not as rocky as they seem. Because with the Six of Swords, this is a depiction of people moving from wa rocky waters to calmer waters. But with it in reverse, in this situation, in relation to this reading, I'm hearing things are not as rocky as they seem. Especially with the Star in Reverse and Strength. Wish fulfillment is here. There are going to be some challenges along the way. But it is worth it. It is worth it to face these challenges and grow and heal. That is what the hermit is saying here. Face this. Go within and understand. Heal. Expand. Explore. Find more of your inner light that these challenges are now trying to illuminate for you. These challenges that you might be facing in this second half of the month are not to derail you. They're actually meant to make you stronger because they're illuminating parts of yourself that need healing, that need to be uncovered, that desire to be explored and shown for the world to see because they, these are parts of you that you are meant to have and to express. So don't run away. There is no need to run away. Especially with all, look at this, the two of cups here, the queen of wands, the 10 of cups here. I mean, if this is a love, if we're talking about a love relationship here, I'm hearing this love could stand the test of time. But time is challenging. Why? Because time is going to bring up things that need healing. So instead of running away, do the work to heal it. Stand strong and face yourself. Okay? Challenge energies for the second half of the month. We have, uh-oh, the Ace of Cups in reverse. My, my, this sure has taken a strong turn, hasn't it? Okay, what I'm hearing is facing inner challenges with the Ace of Cups. Now, th there might be a breakup. I'm just going to say that. There might be. But I feel like it might be temporary. The energy I'm getting with the Ace of Cups is facing your inner truth. Learning to love yourself more. The Ace of Cups absolutely talks about self-love. So the current challenge, what I'm feeling, especially in relation to these challenges that you're facing, the things that are being illuminated, the lack of hope, the fear even, that could be drummed up in the second half of the month, it's all show helping you to face ways that you're not actually really loving yourself unconditionally. That is absolutely going to be, that, that is, yeah, that makes perfect, 
perfect sense. That falls right in line with what I was saying here for the for the energies of the second half of the month. All right? Ace of Cups in reverse is coupled with, look at that. And then it turns right back around. The Page of Wands upright. My, my. Self-discovery. Self-realization. Taking these challenges that you're facing in the second half of the month to understand yourself better. Understand how you need to love yourself more. How you can love yourself more. Re... What is it? Redefining yourself. Relearning yourself, rediscovering yourself. Because the Ace of, uh, I'm sorry, the Page of Wands very much talks about discovery, self discovery, self realization. You see how this guy is, is sizing up that wand there? It's like he's learning, and look at him, he's a grown ass man, and yet he's seeing himself in a brand new way. Through the eyes, through the guise of <clears throat> whatever is illuminated in this period of the second half of the month that is ultimately only showing you what it is you're doing to defeat yourself with the five of swords. Look, illumination, the, the sun, five of swords, queen of swords. How are you deceiving yourself? How are you deluding yourself? How are you being destructive towards yourself? And then, and then experiencing destruction in your external world. Good Lord, Virgo, this is a power month, powerful month. Yeah, this is a power month. This is your month. This is your season. You have such, such an opportunity to, to learn about yourself, to see yourself from a different point of view. The Queen of Swords, I really feel like the Queen of Swords is your energy here. This is the energy of organization, okay? Detachment, yeah. But organize things, put things into their proper place, and then zoom out and see the bigger picture. See how everything is interconnected and how it's been affecting you, how you may have been allowing it to affect you. Okay, potential outcome for the second half of the month we have, there it is, seven of cups in reverse, moving away from illusion, clearing away the illusions. Clearing away the fears and the doubts, no longer being subject to or a slave to illusionary thought. Fears. I mean, <clears throat> I mean, this is, I, I have to say, what, what I've been picking up for the second half of the month here with all of these things that are being illuminated for you, the self-discovery, the potential for self-discovery that you have. Having the Seven of Cups as the outcome in reverse is fantastic. Seven of Cups in reverse is coupled with, okay, Three of Pentacles in reverse. I just heard no longer giving to energies that no longer serve you. Realizing that you may have been putting forth your energies to places and things that <clears throat> really haven't been, been, a, a, been a team effort. This is a, this is a, this is putting an end to something, releasing some sort of third party energy, I want to say, but very much in a business sense, in a material sense. This could be friendships, alliances, alliances that no longer serve you, that have been detrimental to you all along. Finally seeing the truth behind the lies, the deception, the fear, the anxiety, all through surmounting this challenge, overcoming this challenge of self-realization and self-activation. You can do this, Virgo. It's in your blood. Wow. Wowie, wow, wow, Virgo. What a month for you. <sighs> Good Lord. Okay. So let's see what the unicorns have to say for you, Virgo. Please, spirit. 
best messages for Virgo for the month of September 2018. Here we go. Best message, please. Spirit for Virgo. For the month of September 2018. Ooh, sorry. <laughs> Ooh, there goes my phone. Best message, please. Spirit for Virgo. For Virgo. Best message. Okay. All right, we've got three of them right here. See what we got. Oh, yes. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay. First card we have growth. Seek out a mentor or guide. Take baby steps as you grow. Be willing to learn from others. That's exactly what we're talking about here in the second half of the month. It literally 100%. Growth. That is the name of this game this month, Virgo. That, oh, wow. <laughs> Second, we've got gentleness. Be kind to yourself and others. Honor your gentleness. Speak words of love. All right, be gentle with yourself. Be gentle with others. Be as compassionate with yourself and others as you can. Because we're all growing here. We're all learning. We're all changing. And yes, we all, I just heard it, so I'm going to say it. We all deserve second chances, no matter what has happened. As long as you can come to the table and say, hey, I recognize what happened. I accept my part in the situation. I apologize deeply, sincerely. Can we try this again? Yeah. Who, when you put it like that, of course we can. Such a such a powerful month, guys. Finally, we've got past lives. Woo! Release your past life karma. You are an old soul with deep wisdom. Healing your past lives will raise your vibration. So there's that soulmate twin flame connection I was talking about. Here you go. You've got past lives here. You've got the two of cups here. You've got the ten of cups here. Past lives. <laughs> I mean, oh, oh, and then you've got the Queen of Wands here, which is divine feminine energy in the physical realm versus the Empress, which would be the divine feminine energy in the spiritual realms. But you definitely have a transformation here when it comes to a past life relationship, a deep soulmate bond, a twin flame relationship. Transformation is happening, Virgo. It's upon you this month. Take it in stride. Take it slow. Start over. Be a better version of yourself than you were in the past. Embody that better version of yourself that you have already become. Put it to good use now. And don't run away. You don't have to be afraid of challenges. You don't have to be afraid of conflict. But what you don't want to do is feed into the conflict. Recognize the conflict as soon as, it, as, soon as you can. Recognize the conflict. Recognize the self-defeating cycles, habits, behaviors. And cut that shit out immediately post haste guys like don't even give it a second thought as soon as you see it put an end to it rise above it growth rise above it all right <sighs> beautiful reading there you have it virgo Happy birthday. <laughs> I love you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. 
I love you all so much. So, so much. I look forward to connecting with you again soon. Well, next month for October. October. Oh, Jesus. October, guys. The year is almost over. Like, we're coming to the end of the year. This is... This is nuts. All right. Much love. Take care. Bye.